Everything is a mess in here in the kitchen. I need to put away all the groceries. So I'm just going to bring you guys along with me in the kitchen today as I clean and organize and just get the kitchen back in order for this week because I hate having a kitchen that is not ready to go for the beginning of the week. I need to meal prep a little bit. I need to get Ben's breakfast sandwiches ready for work this week so I will be doing that and then obviously making lunch and stuff throughout the day. For whatever I do in the kitchen today I'm just going to bring you guys along so that we can get reset for the week. Right here I'm just washing some potatoes so that we can have some fries to go with our burgers but we actually didn't have any fries already pre-made so I was just cutting up some potatoes that we had on hand to go ahead and use those up. I'm just reheating some burgers over here on this burner that we had left over from last night and then this is actually the first time the second time that I'm using our well pot and we have some oil down in there I'm sure it works way better I just don't even know how it works yet but I do love it so far it's just this is the only part that I hate like because I don't want there's a clip on the side but I'm not sure if it actually like is meant to clip on there so I just have to put it in a bowl and then put the fries in that way. So here's how it looks. And I don't put the lid on because whenever I put the lid on, it seems to make it smoke way worse. I think because all the condensation is just falling back in there. So it works a lot better. And you can see there's like very, very minimal like grease or like steam, if at all, coming out. Like it's barely at all. I really, really do like it a lot. The basket is small, but it's perfect for like me and Ben just because we're only two people. And if I put more oil in it, then of course I could make more at once. But I only had one bottle of oil, so that's all I put in there for right now. But so far, I do love my well pot. It works awesome. And like I said, last night was my first time using it. I was honestly afraid to use it just because I'd never used anything like it. And I was afraid it was going to leak. But it didn't leak at all. And I am in love with it. It's so easy and handy. It's just a built-in little pot in the stove. And you can use it to boil stuff in, like boiled noodles. Or you can use the, put oil in it and fry in it. So that's what, obviously what we're doing for today with potatoes. And we're going to have burgers with it. And I get a lot of questions on how we reheat our food. And as you can see with burgers, we're just, I put them on the stove. For most leftovers, I do put them in the oven. here I'm just dumping the old water out of our Berkey so that I can refill it but before I refill it I actually take the filters out and reprime them just because I hadn't done it since we bought the Berkey so I just wanted to make sure everything was still working properly. Right now we actually have city water and actually on our entire property we have city water even to water our animals we're paying the city to water our animals just because we have a well on our property but it's not connected to anything. So we're saving for that right now to actually get our water converted over to our well water because we did have it tested and it tested good for everything, but our city water actually tested really, really hard. So that's whenever we decided to get the Berkey and 
it just it felt like a safe decision to make, especially with everything going on right now. We just wanted to have the Berkey as a backup. Even when we do get our water switched over to well water, we still will filter our water through this Berkey. We just like knowing that we're getting a good quality water and one that is filtered, especially for canning, just because you're supposed to use a really high quality water for just canning. Just now filled up our Berkey, so it's filtering through, and then I'm actually going to make ice. Normally, I just leave it under the sink to make ice, but I actually took everything out from under here so I could clean, and I need to move all this stuff because it actually doesn't even go under there. That is cake supplies that I'm going to be making a few cakes for Mother's Day. And the rest of that just needs to be pulled out so that everything that actually goes under there can go back and I can put the curtain back in. that I learned how to bake whenever we first started trying to like cook from scratch and like cut out some of the preservatives. We eat biscuits like every single week and we were previously buying like the frozen, I think it's like Pillsbury biscuits and they were kind of expensive actually, but we would make them every single week for Ben's work. So now I just make them from scratch. And this recipe is gonna be up on the blog. So it's a super easy recipe and it's simple. It takes like I think there's five ingredients, maybe six, but it's super easy and I like it because it's fail proof. I've never made a bad batch. Even whenever I first started making them, they turned out perfect that first time. So it took a little bit of tweaking on the, like the amount of salt and butter and stuff. But after that was figured out, they turned out perfect every single time. make biscuits I usually make them like once a week and we'll have them all week long so that I don't have to make them every single morning for breakfast or anything like that we just keep them in a bag I actually freeze bins because they already have sausage and stuff on them so he'll take those to work in the morning so it does save money because he used to go to McDonald's like every single morning so we do save quite a bit of money now and I will have this recipe linked on my blog it's easier to share it that way and that way you can print out the recipe if you want it Almost always whenever I make these, I make a double batch, sometimes a triple batch, just depending on if we have anybody coming over or anything like that. But if you are just now starting out with baking or cooking from scratch, biscuits is one of the easiest things that you can make. And these are not the self-rising biscuits. So uh, I know a lot of people like to start with self-rising biscuits, but these I do add baking powder to. So it's just one extra ingredient. And we actually don't ever buy self-rising flour. I don't. I don't know, I just always add the baking soda or baking powder to make it rise or eggs. I've just never had a use for self-rising flour. And we have not experimented with like the wheat berries or uncorn flour or anything like that. Maybe someday I will, but I'm just not there yet. And I do get a lot of questions on if we eat sour bread. We do, but it's just not our favorite. Like, it's just not for us. We, it's an acquired taste, I feel like. And I had, at our old house, I tried so hard to like get Ben used to it. And it just wasn't for us. Like, it was a little bit too sour. We did love sourdough pancakes, but really that was the only thing that we used it for was pancakes.
And I do use a biscuit cutter just because I have one. It's actually like an old one my mom gave it to me like years ago. But you don't have to have a biscuit cutter. You can just use a cup or whatever you have on hand. I just have a biscuit cutter. A single batch usually makes about 10 biscuits. So usually on a double batch we'll get about 20. Sometimes we get 24. It just depends on how thick I roll them out. And I will say that if you make these biscuits, then you do need to bake them in like a skillet or something. Usually I use a cast iron skillet to bake mine in. Just because of the butter content, it does run out of the biscuits some. And then it makes your oven really smoky. So learn from my mistakes and just bake these in something that has deep sides. If your cast iron skillets are seasoned really well, then you won't need to spray. I never spray in mine and they come up without sticking every time. So it's really just based on your skillet and if it's seasoned or not. a lot whenever we were remodeling the kitchen was how did we plan on cleaning the floors and keeping food out of the cracks and we did start to notice some of the food like getting down in the cracks but we always use the vacuum cleaner like for big messes I'll use a broom but then for the majority of the time I use a vacuum to sweep up floors I just feel like they get a lot cleaner but I recently did a lot of research and found this Dyson vacuum and so far I'm loving it. This is not sponsored. We paid our own money for this vacuum and I do love it though. It suctions to the floor so it creates like, I don't know how to describe it, but it sucks to the floor so that it sucks all the dirt up out of the crack for you. So you don't have to take the hose and go through each individual crack. You can just do your regular sweeping and it cleans out the cracks for you essentially. So I just now put down this rug and it came from our old house. It was our hallway runner and it's actually, you can still get it at Lowe's I'm pretty sure. I'll try and link it down below if you can but it's the rug that's like sold by the foot and you can just tell them how much you want and they'll cut it off for you. And then, as you can see, I've already got the backing on it. That was from the old house, too. But 
I bought a new pack of these and it seals off the end of the rug. I don't know if you can even see that. But you just like peel off the back and then you fold it over. So it gives you that finished edge on the end and it's super easy to do. If you've followed along since our kitchen reveal, then you know that we previously had a large area rug underneath of the kitchen island and then we had chairs sitting around it. But the chairs actually had wheels on them, so that's why we put the rug under, just so it wouldn't damage the floor. But the chairs actually, even with the rug, continued to leave marks on the floor. And also, whenever we had the rug in here, it just seemed like food got all over it, and I could never, like, keep it clean enough. So we're going to try out this little runner. That way it's just not under where we're prepping the food directly. So hopefully it can still add, like, a soft touch in here in the kitchen without having to work so hard to keep the rug clean. Thank you. 